For the third test at the SCG, the Proteas need seven batters to give themselves a chance of matching the runs Australia's seven batters are likely to score. With Chernus de Brain returning home for the birth of his first child, Rassi van der Dissen is the immediate replacement. To make up seven batters, the only other option in the squad is Heinrich Klaassen. I'm not a huge fan of Klaassen as a keeper or batter, as he looks awkward at the crease, and especially with the gloves on. And the fact that he scored 292 against the Knights recently doesn't make him a test batter. Most people claim that our local cricket is weak, so runs in SA domestic cricket don't equate to test ability. It was, however, a significant knock and important in his cricketing development. To be fair to Klaassen, he is a powerful batter and a man with strong resolve, and he has already performed well internationally in white ball cricket, so he deserves an opportunity to show what he can do in the Sydney Test. However, he should only be in the Test side as part of a top seven batting lineup. Kyle Verena has been making runs for the Pro Tiers at six, so I'd put Klaassen after him at seven. That's then starting to look like a more powerful Pro Tiers batting lineup. To make space for Klaassen, we have to drop a bowler. It's tough for Kesh who has had little opportunity to bowl in the last few tests. And while some might point out that the SCG is a spinner's wicket, I would bet on our pace attack to fly in and knock the Aussie top order over, like they did at Brisbane. Don't let them relax against spin, hammer them with pace. It wouldn't be a bad call for either Kesh or Simon Harmer to line up for the Sydney test, or both of them together. They're both excellent bowlers. But my instinct says we need to knock the Aussies over with all the pace we can muster. They're also really good playing against spin, so although the SCG traditionally favours the spinners, for this test I'd revert to our core strength, raw pace. We're 2 nil down, and although we have shown an ability to contain the Australian batters at times in the previous two tests, historically Australia usually score really big at the SCG. Our only hope is to knock them over quickly. Roll the top 4 or 5 over, inside 25 overs, and then hope to clean up the tail. We need our pace men to do that. I'm a huge fan of Lungi and Gidi, and I always back his ability to do something special with the ball. But, he hasn't been firing recently, and in order to knock over Australia at Sydney, the element of surprise might just be our best bet. And it could be a big bet. KG is an automatic choice. Anrich Nukir has taken wickets recently and caused the Aussies a lot of discomfort. And Marco Janssen is useful with the bat, while his height and the fact that he bowls left arm will be vital at Sydney. So here's the long shot. I'd select young Gerald Kutsia in place of Ngidi as a surprise package. Very young, but the Aussies don't know him. He's a big guy, aggressive, gets a lot of lift, and he should be super pumped to have at the Aussies. And with them not having faced him, it might give him an edge. It's a long shot, but I see it as a good bet and he's also likely to score 10 to 20 runs more than Ngidi. I'd also take the captaincy away from Elga and give it to KG. KG is one of the finest cricketing minds I've ever interviewed, and he is a world-class performer, and he is in form. We need someone super positive and confident to lead us through these troubled waters. Elga deserves to be dropped, as he has underperformed for years, but he does have an incredible amount of experience and a lot of ability. He is a good player, He's just not producing the goods. He needs to stand up and really play for his place now. Perhaps the captaincy has made him complacent. So what can this team do? If we succeed in creating magic and rolling Australia for under 200 runs in their first innings, which could happen if our bowlers are on fire and hit the right spots, then with an extra batter, we would have a shot at beating them. If we don't roll them, then Australia will once again most likely rack up 400 to 500 runs at the SCG. And to be honest, that is the most likely scenario. But South Africans know how to fight as underdogs. We love being the underdogs. And we need to give ourselves the best chance of doing that. We need to put ourselves in a position where we can fight. For me, that means going with the standard 6-1-4 team formation. We knocked Australia over for 111 runs at Sydney in 1994. That was the joint third lowest score by Australia at Sydney since, wait for it, 1888. So the Proteas can do it. We can do it with pace. And back then in 1994, we selected six batters, a keeper, and four bowlers. And that's how we rolled them. Yes, it's a gamble, but the best time to gamble is when you have absolutely nothing to lose. 
And by my reckoning, that's exactly where South African cricket is right now. We have nothing to lose.